Okay, I think I just set up a new live stream with my GoPro, so I'm gonna close this one down. Currently at school, Jade. <laughs> Don't get in trouble because of me. Okay, I'm gonna close this stream down and then see what my GoPro is doing. Am I live still on my GoPro? That is the question. I lost everybody. Yeah, this is the GoPro. I'm back on it. I don't know what happened. I'm definitely gonna have to improve on my ability to do lives. Sorry, Pam, I don't know what happened. I have no idea why it just stopped on me, so I do apologize for that. If you had questions in the previous one that I didn't answer, please re-ask. If not, my macarons are halfway done baking. I flipped them around, they looked okay. There was like one lopsided one. But other than that, they were pretty good. Not him. Yeah, Lee, you switched over to the other one. Pam, thank you so much for saying that. She, you, she said she enjoyed this stream, which is encouraging because I feel really badly that I'm stumbling and not really understanding how to do lives yet, but I'm really glad that you've tuned in and I love the engagement, so thank you. Jade. <laughs> Okay, good. I thought you were in a class. Jade's watching from class, guys, <laughs> from school. And I said, don't get in trouble because of me, but she's at lunch, so, okay. Sorry for asking a lot of questions, but if, please don't apologize for asking questions. This is what this is for, Maximus. You ask, um, can, take, Titanium dioxide can help, oh wait. Um, if it cracks before the first five minutes, what does it mean? Um, maybe it, so I had said um, it could mean a lot of things. It could, in your environment specifically, in a humid environment in Singapore, I bet that it is just too humid. Um, close all your windows, buy a dehumidifier, run that and hopefully it will help get that um, dried surface. Are your mats dry when you put them in? Um, Joe asked how much titanium dioxide I put in. I put in a, about the same amount as I did for this purple color, not very much, probably an eighth of a teaspoon. Kathy, thank you for watching. Honestly, I just feel so bad that I cut everybody off. I have no idea why it stopped. Thank you so much for watching Kindled Cakes. Thank you. So, Maximus, if you have your, if you've done your finger test and it's dried and you're still getting cracks, I would definitely lower your oven temperature and try that. Your oven temp might be too high for your macarons. Um, someone said that their second tray of macarons always cracks. I would ask you if you do you run the water, do you do dishes during the resting time? Is, there, is your oven producing a lot of steam that's going to cause a humid environment? Nancy asked if the chef rubber colors are as pigmented as the sugar art. I only have one sugar art and it's a Master Elite um, Red Rose and I love it, love it so much. I would say that the Master Elites are probably more pigmented and they're regular, like I don't know what their other level of colors are, maybe just Elites. Um, I would say they're probably equivalent to the elites. 
So I think sugar art might be the same. Uh, I think the master elites might be more pigmented, but I'd have to test out more of theirs. Chef Rubber is really um, condensed, uh, really good colorant too, so I'm, I'm not sure. Maximus also asked if it is advisable to not flavor the meringue. You know, I would never add, I know people that do, I know recipes that say it, but I would never add vanilla extract or any liquid into my meringue. Um, that would just be asking for trouble, in my, in my opinion. You can use dried ingredients, like someone just asked about the tea leaves. That's great, just don't do too much. Um, the I use freeze-dried fruit. Uh, you pulverize it and add it with your dries. Coconut was a little too oily. It left a uh, weird coloring on my almond flour shells. Um, just make sure if you're putting some dries into your your um, dry into your macaron shells. See if I can get this out. That it's going to be about the same texture as your your con confectioner sugar and almond flour and make sure it's not going to like melt in there or something like uh, like I wouldn't add trying to think of something that would anything unbaked like crumbles of unbaked something is going to change anything like I've done graham cracker crumbles in it and that works fine freeze dried fruits does change the texture of your macaron a little bit. It'll make it a tiny bit chewier, but those work fine. Um, I don't know. I usually reserve things for just sprinkling over the top. Maximus, yeah, that could also be why your macs are cracking. If you have vanilla extract in your recipe, that's a lot of excess moisture that could cause cracking. Someone asked why they have concave bottoms. So I was talking about, I, I would get con concave bottoms on my shells when I had um, my first trays done. Let me go grab that. But when I had those air bake trays that have an insulated path and I'm not getting an insulated pad, so I'm, I wasn't getting enough heat to the bottom of my shells and that was causing them to concave. Let me go. Not done yet. I put one more minute, but I'll have to go check them again. Uh, let's see here. Concave, yeah. Your heat, you might need to raise the heat in your oven or have a different sheet pan if it's not conducting heat well. Do you only get full shells when using parchment paper? No, that just happened to be during that one... Um, experiment that I did that I made a video on that bake I was videoing myself as well as doing the experiment and doing the lights and all that kind of stuff so it wasn't my best batch um, but parchment definitely yields the best results it's going to bake better than like a thick pad here that doesn't conduct heat very well so it's easier I should say to get full shells on parchment but then you have to deal with the um, round, like oval, like shape of macarons on parchment. Uh, let's see, why? So someone said that they're, they're having issues with different baking surfaces and Teflon yields um, lopsided macarons. That could be, you might need to lower your oven temperature when switching to Teflon because it might be just a better heat conductor in your oven and uh, it might just be rising too high and then being lopsided. So try lowering your oven like five degrees and go down from there. Um, I'm not gonna ignore your question. 
so I, it was asked if why I get tiny feet let me go take my max out of the oven and then I will talk about small little feet I did buy the silicone ma macaron mat from Amazon yes it's on my Amazon storefront the, the specific one that I have on my Amazon storefront is large so make sure you know the sizes and if they'll fit on your pans because you might need a smaller a smaller size like for a regular hashi tray Here we go guys I don't know if you can see them but this is fresh out I'll go put them back up and let them cool so I don't get heat by my um, shells that are still resting and then we'll look at these in a second okay um, I wait two minutes before I add my second tray in if I'm not doing like the rotating business since I only have two trays, I, I prefer the bakes when I do one tray at a time. So I wait two minutes before I add my second tray because it helps my oven kind of regulate its temperature if I give it some time. All right, so small feet. I was gonna talk about small feet. It could be a number of things. When your meringue isn't strong enough, sometimes you get small feet. When your oven temp is too low, you get small feet. When you don't rest long enough, it could, you could get small feet. Or not necessarily rest long enough, but if you rest a short amount of time or you don't rest at all, you're likely to have smaller feet. So hopefully that helps. Um, <laughs> someone said, hi, Bake Fairy. That, that's amazing. Um, my question is why do some people split the egg whites and put some in the almonds and some to stiff peaks? Let me, let me read that again. Some people split the egg whites and put some in the almonds and some to stiff peaks. Um, Jenny or Jeannie, are you talking about the Italian method? when you put some of just liquid egg whites into your and make a paste with your dries and then you also whip some up is that what you're talking about thank you Pam for reminding me to check my oven I love it I feel like we're just developing this great community you guys are helping me you guys are helping each other in the comments and I'm trying to help you hopefully not jabbering too much my oven has been empty for two minutes. I'm gonna put the second tray in. A lot of people ask with my baking method, like why, why do I lower my oven temperature and do I lower it again when I put the second tray in? Do I dare move this? Um, and I lower my oven temperature because my oven tends to shoot up so when I put it down to 275 my thermometer and in, internal thermo thermometer in my oven is now reading still 300 so I like to keep my oven at 300 and that's why I put it down to 275 and I do not have to change it like it stays pretty it runs at 300 at 275 so that's just my oven. Once I have it at 275, I don't do anything. Sometimes when I have my air running like this, the cold, cold pan will make it shoot up in temp. So I do need to go check it in a second just to make sure my oven temp is not rising. But that's just something your oven, you'll have to figure out if it tends to be fun like that. Okay. So we've got... Maximus, it is okay to add salt, yes. And how to tell, and how to tell if it came out 
I'm not understanding your second question, Maximus. How to tell if it came out correct height for the feet? What does that mean? Um, I would not switch out salt for cream of tartar. You could use both. You could use one, but I wouldn't like, they're not interchangeable. I guess I have heard though, people using cream of tartar, the acid helps it not be so sweet. Um, so I guess you could interchange them. I would use both though, if you're, if you're a big fan of cream of tartar, use both. That was a big gulp. Uh, let's see. I've tried resting longer. It does nothing. They grow beautifully and then they shrink down in the last four minutes. Interesting. So the shells are rising really nicely in the oven and then they're sinking down and the, the, sh the top of the shell is kind of sinking over your feet maybe. Um, <sighs> you can... And That's really interesting. I would try macronaging a little bit less and see where that gets you. Do, do you feel like your shells also spread a lot? And Sylvie, Sylvie, I cook them for 21 minutes. I do 11 minutes and then another 10 or 11 minutes, depending on the coloring. Yeah, um, the Keck Kids, I don't, I, I wanna know your guys' name so I can address you. Uh, yeah, you could definitely try to whip your meringue a little bit longer or macronage a little bit less. Uh, kindled cakes, you're getting hollows. Um, if you don't think your meringue is overmixed and you think your macronage bat batter is pretty good, um, are you? Sh do you think your oven could just stay at 300 Fahrenheit and not reduce down to 275? That may be the issue with the oven. I know you said it's probably not, but. Jenny, yes, so Jenny, that was the Italian method. So that's where you you want two different portions of egg whites and you're gonna whip one half of it and then you use the other half of your egg whites to make a paste. That's a different method than I use today. Um, but it's just the way that method works, I guess. I don't do that with my French method. I'm gonna go open my oven real fast, just the door and allow for some steam and just to check the temperature, make sure it didn't rise up. All right, um, it did, it was at like 3.05, but that's okay. Hopefully, I'll just double check it one more time, make sure it's not increased more, but my my thermostat is right now set to like 65 degrees, so I'm very cold. So it's probably, the pan was probably too cold and my oven is going up. Let's see. My macarons are baked at 300 degrees Fahrenheit and I dropped my temp down to 275 in my, um, for my oven to stay around 300 degrees or 150 Celsius. How often do you uh, how often do I live or how often oh how how long will my life be got it my reading skills um, 
My, I'm gonna be doing this till around now. 11.30 was my timing. Um, I wanna show you guys the tray though, the first tray at least, so I'm not staying here for two hours for you guys. I know that's a, a long live. So, um, but I will, I have, if you follow me, Maximus, on Instagram, you can always message me if you have questions if you make another batch. Uh, let's see here. Can't believe it's 2.30 in the morning for you. For my question, how to tell if the feet came out right? Um, it's really aesthetics, like whatever you prefer your macarons to look like. Um, some like them to ruffle, some like them to protrude out a tiny bit and ruffle, some like the super clean look of the silk pat um, or a silicone mat. It really is, is just what you like. Everyone has their own opinion on it. No frilly feet. <laughs> when I cook at higher temp and my mac seem to be fuller, but they bake almost the same time and dry. So someone said um, they they bake their their macarons at a higher temperature, but it still takes the same amount of time, but they're fuller. I have no idea why that would happen. If you're baking at a higher temperature, you'd think it would lower the time that you need to bake. So that is a, that is a mystery to me. How do I store my macarons? This is, um, I was gonna do a video on this this week. I was gonna do it last week too, so hopefully it happens this week. But I will, so I'll make these macarons right now. I'll store them in a container and I will actually just show you guys right now. Let me wash my hands and uh, get some gloves and I can show you exactly how I will store them, but I'll be putting them into a chest freezer um, that I have just for macarons. So I'm not, it's not my refrigerator freezer that gets freezer burn in like a day. It's my pleasure to do these Q and A's. Thank you so much for tuning in. You guys have awesome questions. Yeah, um, the Torch Singer said that they cannot bake at higher temperatures. Me either. For real, like I'll get cracks at 315 sometimes. So that makes me remember I need to check my oven, get the, the first batch of macarons out here and show you guys how I store them. So one second, let me wash my hands. As we sit here and talk, my oven rose up more. So I turned it down to 275, but I think they're already ruined. Um, they shot up, so the feet are really big, and now they're kind of falling uneven. So they might be pretty lopsided. We'll see. Um, that's what happens when it's too cold in here, but I have to run my air because it looks like it's gonna rain outside. So here are the cooled macarons that the first tray came out. Let me get gloves and I'll show you how I store. So we've got my Rubbermaid container. I get these at Target. They have a nice seal. They're not gonna get freezer burn. You don't want to put them into something that you don't trust the seal because then you're going to get moisture in there when they're frozen and then they um, won't work. So, <laughs> Someone noticed my wall clock is not, I have not changed it. I love, I love that. Yes, it is an hour behind. I wish I still had an hour before I had to pick up my daughter, but 
I pick up my daughter at noon, so I gotta get going soon. But I gotta go flip my tray too. Let's see here. So here is some of the done Max. I like to pair them up and then I store them in lines paired so it's easier when I take my macarons out after freezing. Like I said in the beginning, if anyone was watching and still watching, I will do my production for the week and do all my shells at once. Then I'll have a day of making fillings and fill and then I take my shells out of the freezer and just let them sit at room temp for like 30 minutes before I before I fill them and then I will fill have like a whole filling party where you lay them all out and fill at once it's just faster it's more efficient and um, yeah so these ones look pretty good but the second tray is not looking hot oh thank you Heather yeah that's my Instagram let me let me go flip this tray and then I'll get back to you guys. This is so funny because I never get lopsided macarons with the French method and um, I totally jinx myself. So, let's see here. Um, if the Keck Kids, what does what exactly mean? Will you, last question, I know you rotate, oh, okay, what does rotating the pans halfway through? So what I was talking about when I was saying I wait two minutes, after I take my first tray out, I close my oven door and I'll wait two minutes with nothing in my oven just to get back to its temperature and like regulate its temperature. If I plop in a second tray right away, it raises in temp. I, like just now, it rose in temperature. I should have waited um, the full two minutes and I only put one minute on my timer over there. So I'm showing you guys firsthand what happens with my oven, this might not happen to yours, but um, it will rise in temperature when I put the second tray in and then they usually crack, but today they are lopsided. So oven problems are the best. They're so fun when you work hard and then you ruin a batch just because equipment. Um, Joe, you're welcome for the live session. Um, <laughs> I am always here for teaching about Max. I wish that they would turn out all the time, so. And yes, yeah, so I, I rotate the actual trays in the oven halfway through, and then I also, after taking one tray out, will wait a few minutes to put my second tray in. Hope that, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, choo -choo -choo. And someone answered the Instagram question for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. Oh, <laughs> you're so, someone said they're so jealous of my daughter for having a good mom. That's way too sweet. Um, I just said that I wish she was at school longer, so <laughs> no, but I do. I love my children. It's, um, they are fun. They are extra for sure but we eat a lot of sweets around here, so I don't know if that's helping with their behavior. But they're pretty, right? They're gorgeous. They're smooth tops, pretty color. And um, one of them is, this one got lopsided, so I'll, I'll bite into it for you guys. And then I'm gonna peace out to pick up my daughter, so. There's a gap. Oh, sorry. But it goes, you can see, kind of goes all the way up to the top. So I'm okay with it. <laughs> Not okay with that. Well, I'm doing pretty well right now. Um, but the structure goes to the top. But it is, there's an air bubble like that usual silicone 
bubble, if you can see. But I will definitely use this batch, but not the lopsided ones. Um, I wish I could show you guys the second tray, but it's still baking, and I should probably go because this has been a very long time. But I appreciate your guys' questions. I really love it. Thank you guys for tuning in. Is it better to add Master Elite color to the dries? Um, someone asked when to add the Master Elites. I like to add it to the meringue because the meringue will, does, um, the moisture of the meringue makes it evenly, the color evenly spread out. Whereas if you mix it in later, which sometimes I do because I split my batter and then I have to do like one color this and one color that, it just gets a little streakier sometimes if you don't have enough time to macronage it all the way through or mix it all the way through before your batter's ready. Thank you everyone. I will hopefully make a real video this week too so we can have an edited, um, concise video <clears throat> instead of this hour and two hour one. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, folks, have a wonderful day or night, wherever you may be. Much love to all of you, and thank you for, for tuning in. I don't know how to stop it because I'm not on my computer. Here we go. I'm going to press it. Bye, everybody.